Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the lab. So uh, things have been a bit slow around here because of all the uh, virus stuff that's going on. Um, I've had things on order for weeks and weeks and weeks and it's things are taking a really long time to arrive. So I've not really been able to do much here, but um, something arrived yesterday and it means I'm gonna have a look at these uh, two Voodoo 2 cards. So I've been toying with the idea of um, building a uh, vintage retro gaming PC based around the Voodoo 2. And I wanted to use uh, an SLI setup because I did have one back in the day, uh, back in the late 90s. Um, I had two uh, Voodoo 2s running SLI while I played things like Quake World, um, Quake, Quake 2, Unreal Tournament, um, an Unreal and that kind of thing. So um, I don't have those anymore. They got sold long ago when I upgraded to uh, probably something like uh, a GeForce or something like that. But uh, I've wanted to get back into that and um, sort of relive some of my memories, really. So um, I picked up, uh, first off, I picked up this card uh, off eBay. Uh, this is a, a 12 megabyte version of the Voodoo 2. And uh, shortly after that, I found an identical one, uh, or so, so I thought. Um, it's exactly the same part number. Um, it's actually a Creative Labs um, card, a CT6670, but it's missing some of the RAM. So this is actually only an eight megabyte um, Voodoo 2. Uh, now, obviously this represents a bit of an issue because if you're running an SLI setup, the cards need to be identical. So um, what I wanna actually try and do is uh, upgrade this one um, and install the missing RAM that's uh, that should populate um, these eight points here. So that's what we're gonna look at today. So let's take a quick look at the anatomy of a Voodoo 2 card. Uh, we've got the video uh, inputs and outputs here. We've got uh, the RAM DAC that actually generates the analog uh, video signal. Um, then along here we have the geometry engine and the frame buffer. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to give us four megabytes of frame buffers. And then we have uh, two texture mapping units um, up here, each with their own separate set of RAM. Uh, so we've got identical memory that was used on the frame buffer. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And um, on the 12 megabyte version, you would also have another eight on this side. Um, and on the top there, we've got the connector for the SLI setup. Now, obviously one of the reasons why you need to have identical cards when you're running SLI is the way that SLI actually works. Um, because you actually have two cards, basically what is happening is uh, each card is basically rendering its own complete set, its own complete picture, um, but it's doing it at half the resolution that um, you have your display set to. Uh, so if you're, um, running the game in 1024 by 768, um, the actual, each card is actually rendering 1024 by 384. So the load is divided by the two cards and then the uh, two images are then um, blended together line by line. So because of this, uh, both cards have to have a, a complete copy of all the textures. So um, there's no point having uh, one card with 8 meg and one with 12 because um, one of the cards is going to run out of memory and you're not going to be able to uh, render the full scene. So as you can see here with the insert video, this is uh, Unreal, uh, which is running on this system, on a, a very, very low spec Pentium um, system with these two cards in. And as you can see, there's glitching and all sorts of stuff going on. And that's because one of the cards doesn't have enough RAM. Um, now it's quite common to see uh, these eight megabyte uh, versions of the Voodoo 2, uh, they were just a cheaper option. Um, and if you're running a single card, it actually doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Um, the only downside is you will might, you might see more um, texture swapping um, when you're playing the game, which is, you can normally see this when it's playing nice and smoothly and all of a sudden um, it'll just go, it'll just stutter for a, a little bit. And that's probably when it's uploading new textures. Uh, into the texture RAM over the PCI bus and um, dispensing of uh, ones that are no longer used. But um, obviously, the less memory you have, the more that has to happen. So there is an impact in game performance. So interesting thing with these is the eight megabyte versions are actually utterly, completely identical to the 12 megabyte ones. Um, they literally just don't have the RAM chips soldered onto the board. So even all the decoupling capacitors um, around the memory chips are all there, ready to go. They've just been completely unused for all this time. So hopefully uh, we can solder on some um, of the RAM chips 
and upgrade this card to a 12 megabyte one. Now I'd just like to take this moment to uh, mention my channel sponsor, PCBWay, uh, the full featured PCB prototyping service. Um, PCBWay offer an extensive range of services and options for PCB prototyping and manufacture. Um, they've got custom options, full assembly, loyalty rewards, uh, discount coupons, all that sort of good stuff. Um, got quick turnaround, competitive pricing. So if you need to make PCBs for your next project, um, then you can follow the links in the video description and give PCB Way a try. Now, how do we go about um, putting some memory on this card? Initially, looking at it, you might think it's going to be really quite difficult because, um, well, where do you even get the chips from? Um, how do you get the right ones? Uh, how do you actually go about soldering everything up? Now, the, the chips, um, we should be able to source these um, from China. Um, now, some people might groan and go, oh, no, they're going to be fake chips, but uh, there are reputable sellers out there, so... Um, I was able to look around and actually find a seller who had some new old stock of these exact um, e-tron tech memory chips and um, they've arrived uh, they look pretty good they don't look fake everything sort of checks out with them obviously they are untested so we'll have to see how we get on now the actual uh, devices that are used on here are e-tron tech em 6141638-25 a um, and what they are is a 256 kilowatt by 16 bit um, EDO uh, dynamic RAM uh, with a an access time of 25 nanoseconds. Now that is actually quite important. I uh, my initial hunting around for some of these chips only um, I only managed to find this the slower versions like the 40 and 45 50 nanosecond versions, but um, if you look on all of the Voodoo 2 cards, they're all 25 nanoseconds, so that was a bit of a requirement. So um, I had a look around and I used one of my chip suppliers that I've used before actually. Um, they're called UT Source. Um, I have, as I said, I've used them before and they've been pretty good. So I've given them another try and the chips have arrived. Um, so I ordered 10 of them. Um, I needed 8, uh, but there was a price break at 10. So I thought I might as well uh, bung on an extra two. Um, so these worked out, I think, they were just over a dollar each, I think. Um, so not too bad. Obviously the shipping added on a bit and I think I've got away with paying any VAT um, as they imported into the country, but um, there is a chance if you do order things like this from uh, China that you might get stung for VAT um, or import duties wherever you are. Right, uh, how do we actually go about soldering these on then? Right, if I just zoom you in a little bit here, you can see uh, where the chips go. So all we need to do is solder these uh, these onto here um, where they should be. Now, there's uh, two ways to actually go about doing this. There's hot air and there's actually soldering with an iron. Um, hot air might be the best better option if I had a bit better equipment here, but um, my preference is to actually solder these with an iron. I have actually soldered packages with this pin type before um, and it didn't go too badly so I think what I'm going to do um, is use the uh, soldering iron to actually solder each of these pins up. Now it does represent a little bit of an issue um, if I flip this over and show you on the other side um, obviously we've got um, three three chips here um, that are pretty close to each other and it might actually be a bit awkward to get the iron down once one of these has been soldered on to get the other side of the pins uh, soldered up properly. Uh, but I've got my microscope set up, um, so I'll be using that. And what I'll probably do is solder in this central one first, get the these two sides soldered up, and then I'll do the, this two. And then that one should be fairly straightforward because I can access it easily from both sides. Uh, but the first thing I need to do is actually uh, clean up all the solder that's actually on that's actually on the pads here uh, because it is actually slightly raised and that's going to cause an issue when I start tacking down. So what I'm going to do first is just wick up all of this excess solder, um, get those pads nice and clean. I'll do it for this one and this side as well. So um, out with the solder wick first.
Right, so I think we could uh, actually have a look at um, tacking down the first of these memory ICs. So what I'm going to do is just going to put a bit of solder on um, one of these corners um, and the opposing corner um, just so I can tack it down and get it lined up into place. Um, and then we can go through and solder each of the uh, pins Right, so I think I've got that tacked down in just about the right spot. Um, the chip is the right way around, always a good sign. Um, so I think what I'll do now is just flood this with flux and we'll go through and start soldering up each of those pins. Right, so uh, that's all been soldered up. Um, chips on there. Um, so I just need to give this a clean up. Then we can plug it into the PC and see if it actually works. Fingers crossed. Right, so I've plugged it into my test PC, which is just a, it's just a basic Pentium 166, I think. So uh, just get us up and running. Um, so I've got it connected up. I just need to turn it on. Okay, we've got slot 4 multimedia device, that's a good sign. That's the voodoo. 
So I've, I've only got the one plugged in at the moment. Obviously the one that I've upgraded. Right, so we go to the DFX tab. System info. Frame buffer memory, four megabytes. Texture mapping units, two. TMU revision, four. Total texture memory, eight. Looks like we have a winner. Um, let's test it in a game before we <laughs> commit to saying it's worked. Um, let's just try Quake, GL Quake, I should say. Good sign. And yeah, that looks. I've got no. I've got. Don't have the sound card plugged in at the moment. But that looks like it's working okay. Uh, well, that all seems to work perfectly, doesn't it? Um, I also tried this in SLI with this other card as well, and it worked fine, just as you would expect. So um, I'm really pleased with that, um, considering there's uh, over 240 pins to solder there. Uh, I think I did pretty well, to be honest, so I'm quite pleased with myself. Um, now, in terms of actually doing this yourself, I mean, there are a lot of... Um, 12 megabyte Voodoo 2 cards out there, so they're not in short supply, so I wouldn't really recommend going and doing this deliberately, but if you've got um, one of the 8 meg cards already, um, and you can do the soldering, then it could be an option. Um, it would be cheaper than trying to sell an 8 megabyte card and replace it with a 12 meg, say. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely options there to uh, for people to upgrade their Voodoo 2s. Well, I think that pretty much concludes this video. Um, I'd like to thank my patrons who uh, continue to support this channel and allow me to do things like this. Thank you very, very much. If you would like to be a patron yourself, there will be links in the video description. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.